Today we continue with lesson 6 on our data science and machine learning in AI and R and we are taking it bit by bit. Today we are going to spend about 10 minutes to see how we can solve uh, equations like this. So let's see, I've made a list of equations I would like us to solve. So we are going to solve a few of them and then I'll give you the remaining ones as assignment. So let's get back here. So the first thing you are going to do, if you are given an equation like this, so we have this equation, uh, let me take a pen and let's represent it the way it should be, because Python actually uses the matrix method to solve it. I think that is called the, the elimination method or the determinant method, that is the method Python uses. So this equation can be represented in this way, one, two, one, uh, four, okay? So this is the matrix form, and we have this to be A and B is equal to 35 and 94. <clears throat> so once you have it, Python uh, recognizes this as matrix A and this to be matrix B. So in that way, you can now solve it using linear. The previous tutorial, you already learned how to create matrices, this kind of matrices. So let's solve this one and let's see, uh, make sure we understand exactly how it works. So I'm going to, if you've not subscribed, as a reminder, please subscribe to the channel. Click on the subscribe button below this video so that you don't miss out a lesson. So let me just first, first put a comment that says um, uh, system of equation in Python. Again, if you have any challenges, please leave a comment for me and I'm, I'm going to respond to you. So let's import NumPy as NP. So after importing NumPy, we are now going to represent these two matrices. I'm going to say A is equal to NP dot array and specify the first array has, so let me separate it so that it becomes clearer. So the first row has to be one, one, and the second row has to be two, four. So we learned this in the previous lesson. All right, so let's go for B. So B is equal to np.array, we specify only one uh, only one, one row or one column, which is actually a column vector. So 35 and 94, all right? So we specify A and B. Now, if you look at this place, you can see that we have np is np.linux.solve. That is the syntax to solve it. So you simply say, first I'm going to run it just to make sure everything is okay. I'm going to say x, x represents the solution like x1 and x2 or a and b, because in the equation we have a, the unknowns are a and b, is equal to solve and specify uh, a and b. So let me run it and let's see. All right. So it run. So what is the values of a and b in the equation? So if you check for the value of x, you can see that x has 23 and 12. Plug back 23 and 12 in this equation, you can see that it actually works. All right, so now we've solved this equation. Let's try to solve a tree by tree, and later we now solve uh, any other ones that looks a bit complicated, like ones that has fractions like this may be a bit complicated, but let's solve a tree by tree first. So the first thing I would like to do at this point, in this case, I'm going to say A, is, you are not going to say A, B, C, is still A and B. So I, we are going to say, or well, let me call it C and D this time. What is happening? So let me take a pen. Okay, so let me say C is equal to, two, one, one, because coefficient of x, y, and z, here we have one, three, two, and here we have two, one, 
2. All right, so this is our first matrix, matrix A. So these are matrix A, and the second matrix is equal to, um, we have 180, 300, and 2, 4, 0, okay? So this is the two matrices we have. So we are now going to use Linux to, to solve it, to find the values for X, Y, and Z. So let me op uh, let me get Jupyter Notebook here again. So let's start. So I'm going to say at this point, already you know how to do it. So I'm going to say C is equal to np.array. This, in this case, we have three rows. So three rows, I normally like to specify it in this way before I fill in the content. So for the first row, we have two, one, one. For the second row, we have one, three, two, one, three, two. And for the last row, we have two, one, two, two, one, two. Okay. All right. So let's go for D is equal to, because these variables are just variables names I gave. You can use any other variable name you want. D is equal to np.array. So we have only one column, 180, I have 300 and 240. So I'm going to run it just to make sure everything is okay. Uh, it says only two non-keyword arguments are accepted. Only two non-keywords. So let's see, np.array. So it's saying that there's error somewhere. So let's see, let's check here. NP that array. So oh, so I need to use the other opening and closing uh square brackets. Alright. So the next thing I'm going to say, I'm going to say X, or maybe let me say um sometimes let's say X1. So it could be X1, X2, and X3, but let's just call it X uh or let's call it XYZ so that we get it right. Although you can give any name you want. So we are going to say np.linalg, linalg for linear algebra, dot solve, and specify A. This time we'll have just C and D, all right? So I'm going to solve it at this point. So we have it solved. So if I check for the values of X, Y, and Z, you can see that it gives us 36, 48, and 60. So what I want you to do, try to plug in 36 for value of x, 48 for value of y, and 60 for the value of z, and see if it gives you 180. Maybe I'll just do it at this point. So we have 2 times 36 plus 48. That is 1 times 48, so it's just 48. And plus, uh, the next one is what? 60. And let's run it to see. So you can see it gave us 180, so the, the solution is verified. All right, let's now go to something that looks a bit tough, like uh, one that has a fraction like number 10. So let's try number 10. Uh, let's try number 10. Let me just take a pen. So let's try this. So what do you think we can do? So let's try to solve it as well. So again, I'm going to, let's say, let me write it here. So I'm going to say A, I think we've used A, B, C, D. So I'm going to use E is equal to, in this case, we have 5 over 4. We have minus 2 over 3. Here we have 1 over 4. And here we have 5 over 3. And we have F. Let's call it f is equal to uh, 3 and 6, 3 and 6. Okay, so let's try to solve it to see how it goes. Now, if you want, you can actually evaluate these uh, expressions before you solve, but you can actually solve it just like that. So I'm going to say e is equal to 
Uh, I don't know if it's going to work exactly, but let's specify the fractions inside. We have 5 over 4, comma, and we have minus 2 over 3, minus 2 over 3. Uh, that is for the first one, and for the second row we have 1 over 4, and then we have 5 over 3, 5 over 3. So I'm going to close the square brackets and close the square bracket at this point. So let me run it if it runs, and it runs perfectly. And I'm going to say f is equal to, actually, it should be np.array, np.array. All right, so let's run again. Perfect. So I'm going to say np.array. Now, you also specify, in this case, we have 3 and 6. Let's run it. So let's get the solution at this point. So we have xy is equal to np.linux dot solve and you specify e and f okay so at this point we can run it and we have values for x and y so if i check values of x and y and run it it gives us x is equal to 4 and y is 3 so what you can do you can try to plug back x and y the values for x and y into equation 10 and see if you get the correct solution so this is how to work with system of equation. I would like to recommend you solve all these other ones from 1 to 10. And if you have challenges, leave your comments, uh, leave, leave your comments below in the comment box below. So we've completed lesson six. So this lesson six we've completed. And in the next class, we now talk about nonlinear algebra. We'll be talking about polynomials and how to evaluate polynomials. I would like to thank you for viewing and also remember to subscribe and don't miss out they are trying to solve these problems in two days so that by the next uh, the next time the new lecture comes you'll be able to have it. So we we'll see you in the next class.